can see Karen on our screen. <laughs> All right, our numbers are still going up. Oh, sorry, Karen, go ahead. Always so happy to be here with my Lean Frontiers family. <laughs> we love you, Karen. <laughs> I feel the same way. Um, okay, so our numbers have kind of slowed down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and introduce Karen. Um, so everybody knows me. I am Skylar Cunningham with Lean Frontiers, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, as I said earlier, you can see Karen on the screen. Um, you will receive a link to view this recording within 24 to 48 hours, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Karen. Karen is on a mission to activate people to create a kinder, better world. An artist, internationally acclaimed speaker, award-winning author, consultant, coach, and practitioner, Karen is one of the founding mothers of the Women in Lean, Our Table, a global group of almost 900 women lean practitioners. Karen is also founder and president of the Love and Kindness Project Foundation, a registered public charity and the New School for Kind Leaders. She has created both of these initiatives to help people around the world think, speak, act, and lead more kindly. And with that, I will hand it over to Karen. <laughs> thank you, Skylar. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. And thank you to everyone uh, who's joining today. I'm always super happy to uh, be working with my Lean Frontiers family, as I said. And today, we're going to talk about um, my new book, The Kind Leader, A Practical Guide to Eliminating Fear, Creating Trust, and Leading with Kindness. And now you might be saying to yourself, but Karen is a lean practitioner. <laughs> what does kind leadership have to do with lean? What does it have to do with lean leadership? So today, we're going to talk about kind leadership is the key to respect for people. And I'm going to start by asking you to do a little uh, introspection. And the reason I'm going to ask you to do that is that over um, COVID, I was traveling for years and years and years before that. I probably, uh, you know, went somewhere different every week for the past five years. And when just like everybody else, my entire world changed and I stopped traveling and I stayed at home. I really had some time and I spent a lot of time reflecting about what I'd seen going on in the past. And I also spent a lot of time thinking about and imagining the future. Because although sometimes we say, oh, we're gonna go back to normal or go back to pre-COVID times, the truth is I'm not sure I want to do that. I want to imagine what a kinder, better, future looks like. And so I spent a lot of time thinking about what a kinder, better future looks like. And I'd like you to spend a moment too. So I'm going to ask everybody to take a moment, close your eyes, imagine what that looks like for you. So everybody's going to be silent for a moment. All right, and if you have a pen and pencil or pen and paper beside you uh, and you would like to write that down because we're going to use that at the end as well. So while I was at home, um, not traveling, helping lots of different people and having extra time, I also took the opportunity to do something I've always wanted to do. And I've never had the opportunity or felt like I had the time to do it because I was traveling all around. And what I really wanted to do is learn to grow a garden. My backyard just had all these old dead bushes in it and it looked really terrible. So we pulled out all the dead bushes and then we started planting some seeds. And you can see I have this little pot of seedlings and planted them in the ground. And then actually this gigantic amount of mini pumpkins grew and we grew lots of different things mini pumpkins is one of them it was totally fun and it was totally fabulous every day i went out and i cared for my plants i watered them i weeded 
I made sure that they weren't infested with any kind of bugs. I made sure that they didn't get too hot in the sun. It was absolutely fabulous. And it was a lot of work in order to, and in the end, I grew about 45 mini pumpkins. And in growing the mini pumpkins and all different also kinds of grasses and native plants from Illinois, from the prairie, I really noticed how much time and care it took me to do that. Every day I went out there, every day I spent that time. And I every day I could watch the, the leaves growing and the blossoms coming and the pumpkins getting bigger and bigger. One of the things I also noticed was that uh, in the forsythia bush, it, it, beside my house, some, some robins built a nest. And three eggs, were laid and then three baby birds hatched. And as you can see, um, here are the baby birds, if you look carefully, they're peeping right up over the nest. And every day, the mother and father Robin spent so much time caring for the little baby birds. Literally, almost the whole day, they would just be flying back and forth. One of them would sit on the nest while they were little, they'd fly back and forth, they'd bring worms, they'd bring bugs. It was a huge amount of care. And one day I went out and I took this picture and I thought, oh, the baby birds are getting so big. The next day I went out to look at them and guess what? They were gone. I was an empty nester. All that care that the mother robin and the father robin gave the baby birds, all that care allowed them to grow up and fly away. All the care that I put into my garden allowed me to grow 45 mini pumpkins, which I actually had a kindness stand at Halloween and gave away pumpkins for kindness. And what it really made me think about, what it really, really made me think about is that all living things grow in the same way. They grow with care. They grow with attention. They grow by feeding. They grow through kindness. So in thinking about this, you might be thinking to yourself, well, what does that have to do with lean and leadership? So I have some questions for you uh, to think about that. And the first is, well, what's your definition of respect for people? And the reason I want you to think about what's your definition of respect for people is that I find that oftentimes we have a lot of um, definition about the continuous improvement pillar of lean. We have a lot of tools. We have a lot of practices. We have a lot of principles. If you ask someone about lean, chances are they're going to say 5S, right? They're going to say A3. They're going to say Kanban. And there's a lot of definition around the continuous improvement side. I'm not sure there's so much definition around the respect for people side. So I'm going to ask you to take a moment. And first of all, write your definition of respect for people. And then second, write your definition of lean leadership. So I'm just going to stop talking a moment and give you a moment to do that. All right, in this format, we don't have the opportunity, but when I've done this exercise in past, I've asked people to share in the comments or to um, you know, just give their definition. And one of the things I found is that everyone has a different definition of respect for people. Some say it's not yelling at people. Some say it's helping become, people become better problem solvers. Some say, oh, it's all about making sure um, problems are solved at the lowest level of the organization. Some people say it's about inclusion and equity. And so in thinking about that, I realized there doesn't seem to be a standard definition of what respect for people is. And when I ask people about lean leadership, 
I get again that same kind of um, diversity in definition. Some people will tell me, oh, it's about being humble and asking questions. Some people will say, oh, well, it's about going to see people doing the work. Some people will say, oh, it's about trusting people to be great problem solvers and giving them the tools to do that. So again, not a standard in definition. So my definition of respect for people is that we truly believe that all people are creative and capable and that we can help them learn to do more than they ever thought they could do and become more than they ever thought they could be. And that actually, in order to do that, in order to lead people in a way that they become more creative and capable, that they understand that we believe in them, that we let them know that we are going to help them become more than they ever thought they could be. That actually, what we need to do is care for them. Care for them like I cared for my plants. Care for them like the mother bird and the father bird cared for the babies. We need to be kind to them, right? That, that underpinning of respect and leadership is actually kindness. So some things for you to think about. Oftentimes, people say to me, well, aren't lean leaders kind? Isn't lean kind? Well, I want you to remember lean is a thing. It's a way of working. It's a way of managing our organization. So on its own, lean, it's not kind nor unkind because it's a thing. People are kind or unkind. Secondly, I'm sure that everybody knows this saying, be hard on the process and be soft on the people. And oftentimes I think we really focused on this first part, be hard on the process. And again, that's focused on, well, don't blame people. If something goes wrong, go to them and say, we need to focus on the process right? We want to see what let you down so you couldn't do the work the way you expected to do that. But I think we've forgotten about the be soft on the people, which I'm going to translate as be kind <laughs> to people. And we've forgotten that actually, when people make an error or something doesn't go wrong, or to the best of their ability, they have tried to serve the customer, they've tried to complete a process, if they make a mistake or something doesn't go right, they actually feel bad. As human beings, as human beings, we don't want to make mistakes. We want things to go well. We want to do our best. We want to be our best. So we need to actually focus not just on being hard on the process. We need to remember that we need to care for our people. We need to be kind to our people. We need to go to them if they've made an error and say, okay, we'll look at the process and we'll figure that out. How are you doing? What can I do to help you? I'm sure that actually you must feel bad. So just like the mother bird and the father bird took care of the babies and I took care of my plants and grew my mini pumpkins, we actually need to focus just as much on the be soft on the people, be kind to the people, respect people as we need to focus on being hard on the process. So what is kindness? Well, in the Kind Leader book, I define kindness as an action or set of actions. So we have to do something, action, connecting a person's internal feelings of empathy. Empathy is our ability to put ourselves in someone else's shoes, to understand and feel from their perspective, not from ours, and compassion, compassion again is something inside us. It's that feeling that when we put ourselves in someone else's shoes and felt their suffering, we want to do something to alleviate that suffering, to make it better for them. So kindness is the action that we undertake with the purpose of generating a positive effect 
an outcome for another. So empathy and compassion, they're internal. Until we actually do an action, speak a word for that's gonna have a positive effect and outcome for another, we haven't been kind. So kindness actually is the key to respecting people and the key to lean leadership. So why is kind leadership so important? Why is it the key? Because people can't grow to be their best when they live and work in fear. And actually, when you think about it, where there is kindness, you're not gonna feel fear. And where there's fear, you can think back to, oh, maybe I'm a little worried that I'm gonna be treated unkindly. Maybe my leader is gonna shout at me if I make a mistake, or maybe um, I'm gonna be fired if I don't bring this project in on time and on budget. We feel a lot of fear and here's what happens. The fear we feel at work doesn't actually just stay at work. So maybe some of you will remember that old uh, cartoon about uh, the employee goes to work and their manager shouts at them for something and the employee goes home and they shout at their partner or spouse, the spouse shouts at the child, the child kicks the dog. And really we can see that there's this vicious circle of fear. And actually it doesn't start here, end here with the child kicking the dog. And our fabulous friend, Deandra Wardell, when I was talking to her about this in the her kind leader interview said, well, actually then what happens is the child goes to school and bullies someone else. And then that child actually grows up and they become the leader who shouts at the team member again. And we have this vicious circle and people take what they learn at work about leadership and about kindness. And when they're in places where what I call wearing their leader hat at home, being a parent out in the community, coaching their child's sports team, they then take that style of leadership with them wherever they go, they learn by the example of unkind leadership. And that just creates this horrible, vicious circle of fear. When that happens, people cannot grow to be their best. They won't give us ideas. They don't try things. They worry about, they, they suffer from the negative effects of perfectionism. However, where there's kindness, there's the potential for trust. And where there's the potential for trust, people, just like plants and the baby birds, grow and blossom. A kind leader's actions, reactions, and interactions with people create what I call a cycle of trust. And in a cycle of trust, trust means that a person following the leader believes that the leader has their best interests at heart at all times. So remember kindness is the action we take to create a positive outcome for someone else. It focuses us not on ourselves, but outside on someone else. And then when we have that trust and when we have that kindness at work, actually, again, when we wear our leader hat at home, we bring that example of how to act react and interact in different situations, we bring that home to our partners, to our spouses, to our children. And then when they go out into the world, to school, to community groups, to sports teams, to music lessons, to all of those different things, they spread that in the community. And then community members take that back home, that kindness back home. And when they go to work and they're wearing their leader hat at work, they take that kindness back to work. So we break that vicious circle of fear and create a kind circle of trust. So how are we going to do this? This is all well and <laughs> good. We have three key kind leader practices and they are thinking, speaking, and acting kindly. And they each influence each other, which is why I've drawn what I call the helping hands in this circle kind of like PDCA, the circle is always spinning. So you don't have to start with the think kindly practice. You can start with the speak kindly or the act kindly practice because each of them uh, 
interacts with each other. And as you can see, I'm calling them practices. And the reason that they're practices is that we need to practice them. Remember, kindness is an action. It's actually an action. That means we have to do something. So the three kind leader practices each have three behaviors. Think kindly. The first behavior is always assume positive intent. The second is check your thoughts frequently because oftentimes we aren't assuming positive intent. And then the third is consciously change unkind thoughts to kind ones. We're all human beings. We're all going, we're, we're wired for negativity bias. <laughs> we're all going to have unkind thoughts. But when we hear those, what I call voices in our heads, speaking unkindly and thinking unkindly, we can consciously change our unkind thoughts to kind ones. The speak kindly behaviors are choose your words kindly. Lots of times we choose them unkindly. I was just on a session this morning in which we were talking about human resources. Resources isn't a fabulous word to use to describe people. Resources are depleted, used up, thrown out. Instead of saying human resources, we can say, we, we can call people what they are, people. We can call our human resources department human relationships. The words we speak influence how people feel and the actions we take. So choose your words kindly. Use a kind tone of voice. If you have a sarcastic tone of voice, or an angry tone of voice, it doesn't matter what the words you're saying, the actual meanings are, people are going to feel very differently. And third, if it's not kind, don't say it. And we really need to think about that effect that our words have on others, right? If speaking kindly to plants helps them grow, think about how speaking kindly to people can help them blossom as well. And it doesn't mean you can't actually say what you're feeling or say what the truth is. You just have to do it in a way that doesn't denigrate or tear down that other person. Remember, kindness is putting what others think and feel, considering what others think and feel. And finally, act kindly. Check in with people, not on them. And that means that we actually have to recognize that people are human beings and they have all kinds of things going on in their life. And we need to say to them, how are you doing? Not just, what are you doing? Did you complete your goals? Are you on target? How are you doing? Listen with open eyes, open ears, open mind, and an open heart. So if you ask an open-ended question and you don't listen to the answer, even if it's what you don't want to hear, how are we going to react and interact kindly? And finally, recognize others for the full human being that they are. No one is perfect. Everyone comes from a different background. Everyone has a different perspective. Say thank you for effort. Recognize that people are giving you the time of their life. They're never going to get that time back when they come to the organization, when, when, when they uh, leave your organization. So a few ideas about how we can actually turn the key kind leader practices into respect for people. How do we practice them? First, from think kindly, check your thoughts frequently. Really take a pause and put time into your day. You don't have to go from meeting <laughs> to meeting to think, are you assuming positive intent? Or are you blaming people for their mistakes? When something happens, be conscious of what's going on in your mind, right? And if you actually find yourself assuming negative intent, which happens to all of us, pause. Write down all the different possibilities that someone could have acted that way, that thing could have gone wrong, and then actually go and speak to them. Second, think to yourself, am I giving my people challenging targets and assignments because I truly believe that they can learn and grow and achieve them? Lots of times I hear from people, oh no, we don't want to give people a stretch target or oh, we can't put that 100% because uh, people actually won't be able to do that and it will be demotivating. I actually think that's disrespectful. That the kind thing to do is think this person can be more than they ever thought they could be, do more than they ever thought they could do. And I'm going to help them have that positive outcome. 
So there's a couple of things you can do from think kindly, speak kindly. Again, choose your words kindly. Are you speaking about people in human terms? Again, the people who serve our customers aren't resources. We aren't gonna chew them up, spit them out and throw them away. They're not gonna, I'm gonna go get a new computer today. <laughs> I think because mine is quite a few years old and not functioning the best. People, we don't want to recycle them every three years or five years. We want them to stay with us. We want to help them learn and grow and they're gonna appreciate and our customers are gonna love that. And the people who use our products and services, they aren't numbers either. <laughs> Oftentimes we refer to them as a piece of new business or client number one, two, three, five, six, seven. They're human beings. So speak kindly, choose your words kindly. And think if I wouldn't want someone to use that word to me or about me, is this gonna, is it a human word that's gonna help someone blossom and grow? Choose a different word. And last, act kindly. Listen with open ears, open eyes, open mind and an open heart. Are you giving your people the time and space to answer your questions honestly? If you ask an open-ended question, you pause so that people can answer. If you see that someone looks uncomfortable and doesn't want to speak in that situation, do you follow up with them later so you can find out what it is they want to say? When you call someone to have a meeting, do you see that they have that look of fear? If so, probably they're worried about some kind of unkindness. Last tip, are you giving people your full attention when they're talking to you? If you go to Gamba, do you have your device with you and you're spending time looking at your device? If so, I'm gonna say that's not helping you respect people. So these are just a few ideas. You can learn more in The Kind Leader. It is packed full of exercises in every chapter to help you practice the practices because the wonderful thing about practicing kindness is I can guarantee you in the next two minutes, you will have an opportunity to practice. And the more you practice, the kinder you'll get. So what I'd like us to do, because we're down to the end of our time in this very short session together, is look back to think, what, what, what does a kinder, better future look like? And thinking about what we've talked about on this webinar, Think about what the first step you can take as a leader at work, at home, in the community to respect people and create a better future through kind leadership. The truth is the future is in your hands. The future for all of us is in your hands. We all have a choice. We can think, speak, and act kindly and create a kinder, better world. If you want to know more, you can order a copy of The Kind Leader. You can visit my new website, kindleadership.org and become a student at the New School for Kind Leaders. And of course, as well as lean and process improvement coaching, I'm always happy to help people um, who want to, who, who are struggling. It's not easy to be a kind all the time. It's not easy to figure out how to be a kind leader in every situation. So. That's it for today. I'm so looking forward to hearing what your first steps to creating a better future through kind leadership will be. Thank you, Karen. You are always so great to listen to. I thoroughly enjoyed that presentation. Thank you to everybody who joined in today. Um, again, you will receive a recording to view this presentation within 24 to 48 hours. Um, that will be an email from me. And again, thank you, Karen. And everybody have a great rest of your day and the weekend. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.